welcome back for another Marine Biology Post YouTube video. I told you wouldn't have to wait long and hopefully if I've edited this quickly, you haven't waited that long. <laughs> little mini series of frequently asked questions that I always get on my Instagram. So today we're going to look at the best subjects to take for Marine Biology. This can either be an A level or a GCSE level, depends, or whatever equivalent stage you're at. But these are just, I think, the five best subjects that you need to take for marine biology that will set you up the best and you'll find the degree easier. <laughs> well, hopefully. <laughs> this will just help transition you into the degree as smoothly as possible and it won't feel as overwhelming. Before I say anything else, I think it's really important to remember that when you're picking your subjects to study and take, it's really important to take subjects that one, you're really good at because you're gonna get good grades more easily if you do this and that's kind of the goal. Two, ones that you actually enjoy, you'll be more motivated to do them and you are more likely to do better. So that's just really important disclaimer at the beginning. Also I have to say, doing the course that I'm doing, I know first year was a lot of levelling the playing field, so we did a lot of these five subjects and A level level, kind of getting everyone up to the same knowledge base. So I never took physics or maths, but we did some like A level physics and maths in the first kind of semester so that everyone was on like an equal playing field. Also, another thing, you do not need to take five A-levels. Um, you can, I know some people do, but uh, I didn't. I took three A-levels, one AS, and then an EPQ. But I didn't take five, so it's kind of really difficult to take five, so you can just pick like your top three that you really wanna take from these five, or something like that. Okay, number one, obviously, is biology. I mean we wouldn't be doing marine biology without it. It's kind of self-explanatory but it just gives you the foundation of knowledge that you're going to use in your biology degree. So basically we end up covering loads of processes that you learn in A-level biology in a lot more detail. I'm doing a module at the moment called phytoplankton and primary production and this is all about photosynthesis um, in phytoplankton so we just go into photosynthesis in a lot of detail and if you hadn't taken biology it would have been a lot harder. Also for a lot of degrees taking biology is an entry requirement so you wouldn't really be applying if you hadn't taken biology so definitely take biology. <laughs> Leading on from biology another really important subject to take is chemistry. Now aside from biology I would say the other for a more like suggested um, and they're not like essential but I would say that the other four are really useful. So if you can pick from those four, I definitely would suggest it. So with chemistry, I think it builds up a lot on your biology knowledge. So when you're doing biology and you're learning about chemical reactions and all these biological processes, a lot of that is chemistry. And by doing chemistry, you actually understand things in a lot more detail and things kind of make sense and all the jigsaw pieces kind of fit together. It also comes up in quite a lot of modules. I know in first year we did biogeochemistry and obviously that had a lot of chemistry in it but it was more about chemistry within the ocean and the processes of all the elements and how everything works basically. You also do a lot of things on like oxidation and reduction reactions which are really important to understand what they are and you might have some basic knowledge of that from biology but chemistry you can really drill that into so you probably understand what's going on. Also taking chemistry you do a lot of lab work which is so helpful at university. You actually understand lab work a bit better so, so you understand the equipment and the processes that you're doing and that can be really useful. Another really key subject to take is geography and this kind of links to chemistry as well in a way. This gives you a basic understanding of geological processes like weathering, how rivers work, erosion, uh, estuaries, that kind of thing which come up a lot in a lot of modules. It can also help you understand how like the world functions as a whole, so when you're looking at large concepts like tides and currents, it can be really helpful in your understanding of that. It's quite a good one that links in with oceanography and it also is quite useful because I remember at A-level and GCSE geography we did like stats tests, so like t-test, Spearman's rank, um, and that comes up quite a bit when you're doing data analysis. And then these last two, I never took. I only took biology, chemistry, geography, and like a random history, I guess. But um, I never took physics or math. But we're gonna start with maths. Ew, <laughs> I hate maths. <laughs> but it does kind of crop up a little bit in marine biology. Um, I wouldn't say it's super advanced maths. I'd say it's definitely a big step up from GCSE, but I never took A-level maths, I just did maths in my A-level 
chemistry and biology and geography and I find that really helped but I never actually took A level maths but I know a lot of people in my course did especially if they were taking marine biology with oceanography or if you were taking oceanography maths is a lot more involved I think rather than marine biology where it, you do have to do maths but it's not as intense we also use maths all the time for our stats tests and data analysis which is also when it comes in handy. In first year we did a module called quantitative methods and this was basically just a load of maths and a load of coding. Um, so I found that really hard. <laughs> I would just say if you haven't done maths since like a GCSE level, it might be good to brush up on them. Just have a look over the maths you've done in biology or chemistry A level and that will help you. I'll try and put some videos while I'm talking about this on the screen of some of my notes that have like mathematical equations in. Don't freak out, like I've never actually had to properly go through the whole equations or anything. You just have to understand kind of what's going on. I mean, I don't really understand a lot of them, but you're meant to be able to understand what's going on. <laughs> and lastly, physics. Uh, again, I'm not a huge physics fan, but it does come up in not only oceanography, but in marine biology. I think I underestimated how physics heavy it would be. I mean it's really important when you're understanding these large global concepts like currents, like physics involved in that and as well as sediment, uh, physics is involved in a lot of geology and you do quite a lot of that in marine biology as well. Also it comes up a lot in like biological functions so why organisms are shaped a certain way, you have to understand the physics and the flow of water around them um, which is really interesting and mind-blowing and it's still boggles my mind I still don't understand a lot of them okay that was it guys that's the five subjects I would recommend that you take also if you can take things like geology I know I could never take that when I did A levels but I know some places do take subjects like that or an environmental science I never had that option but I'm sure that they would be really useful as well they are the five key subjects that I feel like you need when you're doing marine biology so if you can take any of those you'll be going in the right direction I hope this video was helpful and answered some of your questions feel free to leave a comment below and please like the video and subscribe and i will see you in the next one bye guys